my dear brothers and sisters, you may consider today's khutbah as a continuation of last week's khutbah. Because talking about death, first of all, as I mentioned last week, was a recommendation of Prophet Muhammad so that we keep ourselves in check. If you recall, remember, revoke, talk about, or invoke, not revoke, invoke, and talk about death as often as you can, not in the sense that it will separate you from living your life, because life is the preparation for that exit which is going to happen no matter what. And you remember, I mentioned from Surah Al-Hijr, what, you know, or Surah Al-Zumar, what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala told us, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ You are going to die, O Muhammad. So will they. Everybody is going to die. And as a result, if you know that something is the only certainty that we can be sure of, then we have to keep it, you know, on our horizon all the time. If you want to study something, you prepare for it. If you want to achieve a certain goal in this Hayat dunya you put it on your horizon and you plan your way. How are you going to achieve it? And Muslim in his authentic compilation of the hadith of Rasulullah mentioned something very interesting about one of the daughters of a man by the name of Al-Haritha ibn Al-Nu'man. One of his daughters said that ما حفظت سورة قاف إلا من في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يخطب بها كل جمعة. This is a hadith which is صحيح. This lady, the daughter of Al Harith ibn Nu'man, said that I memorized Surah Qaf by simply listening to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم giving his Jum'ah khutbah by just basically reciting Surah Qaf. And the scholars of Hadith, you know, differed about the interpretation of that Hadith. They said that doesn't mean that he used only to recite Surah Qaf from Qaf wa Qur'an al-Majeed, فَذَكَّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ to the end, every Friday, every Friday, every Friday. But they said most probably he used to take pieces, quotations from this surah and include it as often as he could in his khutbah. And they said that Surah Qaf is so important because it talks about death, resurrection, enjoining goodness among people, straightening their goals in life, talking about everything related to life and death. That's why Rasulullah used to quote it or recite it as often as possible. And from that surah, there is an assertion of a question. And today, by the way, so that you don't start to say, oh, what are we going to talk about death? Uh, two things only. Time does not allow for more than two things. One is about the throes of death, Sakarat al maut Are they real? Some people say, uh, why does God put us through that? Or does it really happen? Or is it something that scholars differ therein? And the second question, what are the signs that someone who died had a good ending? Husn al khatima now, as for the throes of death, it's a fact. 
whether it is for a believer, whether it is for a non-believer, all people, everyone, even Rasulullah said before he died, إِنَّ لِلْمَوْتِ لَسَكَرَاتِ And sakarat, the throes of death, are the pangs of the soul departing from the body. It is not easy. However, for the believer, the angels that are accompanying the angel of death give that deceased person or the person who is dying or who is about to die that comfort, that assurance. You know, imagine that scenario where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Waqi'ah وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ Allah is closer to that person than us who are in attendance and the angels are all around and that person in that company will take those pangs of death and then knows from the angels that this is it no more لا يذوقون فيها الموت إلا الموتة الأولى in Surah Al-Dukhan, ayah number 56, that for such, for the believers, that's it. So it happens and it's gone. So this is, this is how the believer is assured, is told by the angels. However, for the non-believer, as we read in the Quran, that when the angels that are accompanying the angel of death come to that non-believer, that person who rejected God, who rejected uh, uh, death, who, re who said that uh, uh, we are going to just basically disintegrate and, and go without hisab, without judgment. It is described that the angels that the angels, instead of giving comfort, they will be actually making it so difficult. And the description, the very graphic description, is that those angels will be striking the face of that person and the backs everywhere. So it's going to be, it's going to be a very, very difficult encounter. So these are Sakarat al maut And in Surah Qaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that fact. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٍ That the throes of death are going to come. And that's the truth. When Allah says that's the truth, anything that comes from God is the truth. The absolute truth. We cannot speculate about it. So for people who ask, or who deny, or who you know say, well, you know, it's Allah subhanahu wa taala told us wajaat sakratul mauti bil It's a fact. However, the person, as we mentioned last week, al kayis, al fatin, a smart person, is someone who prepares through her or his actions for that moment. Everything they do for that moment so that it's going to be easy. It's going to be light. And as Rasulullah you see the time is very short. He described that when the angels are there even though there's pain but the soul will depart the body the same as the point of dew that will fall softly from a wet leaf. Remember when you see a leaf in the morning and it is dew all over and you know you see it coming down very smoothly and softly and easily yet for the non-believer it would be just like trying to separate wet cotton from a comb from a metal an iron comb see how difficult that would be so knowing these facts let us prepare for them. It's either easy or difficult, and it's in our hands. That's number one. Number two,
scholars counted so many signs of a good ending of a person. But the ones that I found authentic by agreement of the scholars on them, I'm going to mention them, and they are five. Five of them. And again, I would like to say that if you see all of them on someone who is dying, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. All five, alhamdulillah. A few of them, one, two, alhamdulillah. None of them, it does not mean that the person is going to a bad ending. It doesn't mean that at all. At all. And the scholars assured us that, oh, you know, my father, my mother, my sister, my, my didn't, alhamdulillah. It doesn't mean that. But if you see it, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Number one, a good sign or a sign of a good ending is to see perspiration on the forehead of the person who is dying. And the hadith reported by Ibn Majah as an authentic hadith, hadith sahih, he said, مَوْتُ الْمُؤْمِنِ بِعَرَقِ الْجَبِينَ So if you see perspiration, say, Alhamdulillah, that's a good sign. Number two, number two, it's a hadith that was narrated by At-Tirmidhi وَقَالَ حَدِيثٌ ضَعِيفٌ At-Tirmidhi said that it is not an 100% authentic hadith, it's, it's a, a weak hadith, but the fact that it is narrated through many sources makes scholars co-tipped. And they said in this hadith that مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ يَمُوتُ يَوْمَ الْجُمُعَةِ أَوْ لَيْلَةَ الْجُمُعَةِ إِلَّا وَقَاهُ اللَّهُ فِتْنَةَ الْقَبْرِ Now I'm quoting it and I remind you that At-Tirmidhi himself said it is weak. But because it is quoted by scholars, Alhamdulillah, it makes us feel good because it says that Rasulullah Sallallahu reported to have said that any Muslim who dies the night of Jumu'ah, which is the night from Thursday into Friday, that's the night of Jumu'ah, or the day of Friday, would be spared the difficulty of internment into the grave, will be spared that. So it's a good thing. Some scholars added to that, provided that he did not die owing people any haqq, that he did not uh, take any right from someone, did not uh, do some damage to a person, and just the fact that she or he died on a Friday doesn't mean that. So they qualified that statement or hadith from Rasulullah Now, the third sign of a good ending is if a person, the last thing that she or he says before they breathe their last is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And this is based on a hadith by Abu Dawood and Al-Hakim whereby Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is reported to have said through the authority of Mu'ad ibn Jabal لَقِّنُوا مَوْتَاكُمْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَمَنْ كَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِهِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Ya Allah, this is, this is the third sign. Rasulullah Sallallahu is encouraging us to tell a person who is dying to say la ilaha illallah but scholars tell us if the person does not say it with ease don't toil on them don't force them to do it just remind them laqinu just say it don't and the mistake that people say is Say la ilaha illallah. Say la. No, no, don't say say. 
just in the presence of the person who is dying, you say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. And if the person catches that while he is or she is breathing their last, they will say, La ilaha illallah. And if it's that the last thing from this dunya, it's a sign that this person, inshallah, is on his or her way to Jannah. Number four, a hadith narrated by Ibn Majah as well, that من مات محروقا and in another uh, saying is من مات محترقا it doesn't mean the same thing من مات محروقا أو غريقا أو بالطاعون أو بمرض البطن أو دفاعا عن أهله أو نفسه أو ماله مات شهيدا and there are many hadith in different uh, sayings but they mean the same thing that there are categories of people who die either either uh, death through drowning or in a fire or cancer or uh, you know the plague COVID-19 is a plague uh, a pandemic or uh, dying because he was defending his family and somebody killed him or defending himself or defending his wealth, or defending whatever he is, you know, that person is a shaheed. However, let me explain, because many people ask this question. That person, he is a shaheed in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So that person will be rewarded as a shaheed, but that person, unlike the shaheed who dies in the battlefield, who is not to be washed or uh, shrouded, or that person has to be washed and has to be shrouded. So this is the difference. So some people would say, okay, if it's a shaheed, do we have to wash the body? And absolutely, yes. But he or she will be given the reward of a shaheed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this dunya, that person will not be dealt with like a person who dies in the battlefield. We have to understand that. And number five, a uh, sign of a good ending is to die while performing a ibadah. For a person to die while making wudu, to die while praying, to die while fasting, to die as she or he is making tawaf around the Kaaba, to die in Arafat while doing Hajj, to die in Ibadah, to die while coming to the Masjid, to die while taking some money to give it to poor people. This is Ibadah. So this is a good sign as the Hadith that is narrated by At-Tirmidhi and Ahmed and it is a Sahih Hadith whereby either uh, whereby Prophet Muhammad is reported to have said either arad Allah bi'abdin khayran asalahu asalahu qalu wa ma asaluhu ya Rasul Allah قال أي رسول الله يوفقه إلى عمل صالح ويقبضه عليه يا الله. so if Allah سبحانه وتعالى is seeing that this person is doing a plus, this person is performing honor standing, then Allah سبحانه وتعالى will at the time when Allah has willed to capture that soul through the angel of death, he will, Allah, will make that person perform a ibadah at the time destined for the soul to depart the body. And this is a sign 
for the family of that person. They feel so good about the person. Allahu Akbar. Imagine a person, you know, and we've seen it many times, a person dying while in sujood. Ya Allah. And in another hadith that Rasulullah mentioned that if a person dies in that condition, يُبْعَثُ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ he will be brought on the day of judgment in a state of sujood. Alhamdulillah, I shed on Lai la hail the law of Salah was Salam while I was with that while I early he was on me, he won on Wala. Robbish Rahli, Sodri, Wayasirli, Emery, Wahlul, Rokdata, Milisani, Yakahu, Kobi. Brothers, sisters, I know that not everyone has the ability to memorize the Quran. Not everyone. But how beautiful is it? to memorize those surahs or those sets of ayat that keep reminding us of how to stay focused on as-sirat al-mustaqim and knowing where we are heading. And one of those surahs is surah Qaf. Please try to memorize it. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ Listen to this. I don't need to comment on that. I don't need to explain it. Look at this description. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ And look at that. Speed of expression. We were just talking about life. Look at the speed. Because it's not easy. I'll explain. معها سائق وشهيد لقد كنت في غفلة من هذا فكشفنا عنك غطاءك فبصرك اليوم حديد and it goes on to the this is this is a surah this is a surah that if Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم chose this surah to recite it or parts thereof from the member every Jumu'ah then it has to be something that should attract our attention. And the explanation is, we created humans. And we know exactly what he or she is, is, is uh, planning, is thinking about. And we are closer to that person than the jugular vein. And remember that there are two angels accompanying us and they are recording everything. Not that they have to keep a record so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will... No, no, Allah does not look at it. But it is for us to take that in our hand. Ya Rabb, make it in the right hand. We will look at it ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows before it even happens. So if you are not going to prepare for that moment, I'm sorry to say that everything you are doing, if not in preparation for that, then you are driving carelessly. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad, كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وخطايانا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزقنا اجتنابه اللهم علمنا من دينا ما لحلنا وذكرنا منه ما نسينا 
وكن معنا ولا تكن علينا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة